let's finish here, which is our last module. So we're gonna talk about, excuse a Coke, K-O-C-H, Coke, Robot Coke's contribution. Okay, I want to write something here before we go over the slides. This is the key here, it is called a pew culture. It's a big story. Okay, how to get a pew culture? Now, first of all, is for what is pew culture? This is a group of cells coming from a mother cell representing a GDNM and a species name. That means a pure culture. Now, how to get a pure culture? In the history, there is a two different groups. We talk about Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur said, we can do in a liquid media using 10 or 100 fold serial dilution. And we will practice in the lab later on. So what happened is, Let's say this is a solution, okay? Now this is a, all these like a, um, buffer the pepton water or like a dilution. So we do this, we do this serial dilution. You can do tenfold or hundredfold. At the end of the day right here, we're gonna only one cell. Is this works? Theoretically, yes, practically not, because we never know that one cell will be the exactly one cell. So this certainly doesn't gonna, does not gonna work very well. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Robert Cook did something else, okay? He gonna to use a solid medium. But the problem is who gonna generate the solid media? Which material is better? What are the material? That's a story, okay? So they spend a lot of time to find it. And uh, a lady called Fanny Hesse find that Agar is a uh, important media coming from the seaweeds. The polysaccharides coming from the seaweeds is the media, solid media to isolation single colony. Now this is very picky because the solid media has to be melted at 50 degrees Celsius, solidified, at 25 to 35 degrees Celsius, it cannot eating, or we say eat, eaten, cannot by bacteria. So bacteria can grow there, but cannot eat it. That's very picky. At the end of the day, what he find using an agar, then he used so-called streak plating. This is what we're gonna do, very intensive streak at the beginning, less intensive in second college, light in the third one, after incubation, you will see the single colony. This is called single colony, and this is a pure culture. Okay, now this agar, what is the container for the agar? In the history, 
Somebody using rectangle one, somebody using round one. But the round one is good because when you use round one, you have the same area but less material. Who created this idea? The guy called Richard Petrie. That's why all of these container, we call it Petrie dish. That's a container using for carrying agars. Okay, so that's a story. So let's go back to see, uh, let's go back to see the, see the slides. Okay, here is the one. The Bob Coke find the pure culture. So the same colony arose from a single cell. So use streak masters, streak plating masters. Um, they use the gelatin as a solidified, solidified agent, but it doesn't work because gelatin will be melted at even 37 degrees Celsius. And uh, um, it will be melted at a low temperature and also the bacteria growing there, it will be, it will be dissolved. So it's like bacteria will eating it, will be eating it. That's not a good idea. So Fanny Hesse, the wife of Walter Hesse, Walter Hesse as a research associate working in the Coke lab at the time. So Fanny Hesse is the first person to find, use agar as a solidified media to isolation bacteria. So the story is in a very hot summer at German. So what Hesse is thinking about which material used for solidifying agent. And uh, his wife Fanny Hesse is making the lunch. A very hot day, there's no air condition. So the day, the lunch, he said, it's ready. The lunch is ready, honey, please come here. We have uh, a French pudding. And then the water has to think about the pudding. What is the material for making the pudding? So he talked to Fanny Hesse. Fanny Hesse said it maybe from agar. So agar, then what has he think about agar? Okay, let's talk, talk to the cook. So they go to find the Bob Cook and they share the story, share the, uh, share the idea. And later on, they did lots of research and then they find finally find agar is a good solidifying material to use isolation of bacteria. And of course, I already mentioned the Richard Petri. It's called a Petri dish, making a container for holding on those agars. This is Fanny Hesse. Now we're gonna see what is called a pure culture. So what is agar? It's a polysaccharide isolated from seaweed. It's a solidified nutrient media to growing bacteria. Okay, because agar is a complex polysaccharide, so most bacteria cannot digest it. It will be, which means will not eat it. So it remains solid at wide, very wide temperature ranges. This is a strict plate. You can see the single colony. That means a pure culture. This is a strict plate methods. So the first culture is very intensive less intensive second one and the least intensive the third one and then after incubation at 37 degrees celsius for about like 24 hours for most bacteria you will see these round dots there that is a single colony that represents a group of cell coming from one mother cell representing only one genome name and one species name so this gives our last question. How are we naming and classify microbes? We use binomial system, which means every bacteria, you have to write elatilicize, which means elatic. There is a first name is a genome name. The second name is species name. So bacillus arthritis. 
Bacillus is genus name, Aceritis is species name. Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium is genus name, botulinum is species name. E. coli, the full name is Escherichia coli, Escherichia is genus name, coli is species name. Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus is genus name, and pyogenes is species name. But here, I would love to mention one thing. That is an exception. So we're going to use the blackboard to talk about that, OK? The one exception we know that, let's say, is, is Sherosha coli. That is italic. You have to write. But there is one exception. I want to mention right now, lots of people doesn't know, which is regarding salmonella. So when you write a salmonella, you always see salmonella. Let's say salmonella Newport, you always see it like that. Okay, this is italic. And this is not really italic, it's just normal. Why? Because this is not a species name. This is subspecies name. Why? Because Salmonella have many species. When we talk about Salmonella Newport, Salmonella Thompson, we are talking about is one group of subspecies. That is a full name should say Salmonella in Terica subspecies Tom. So we just skip this part. That's why when you write Salmonella, Salmonella is italic, but Thompson is just normal. Okay, same thing here. So we want to make it more clear is, let's say we have, uh, this is Salmonella, that's called the subspecies enterica. Subspecies Newport, let's say. Okay, you should know that these are all italic. This is normal. Now, when we write Salmonella in the publish, in the published book or textbook, we usually skip this part. We don't write this part. So that's why when we go here, it becomes Salmonella. New part. Okay, this is italic and this is just a normal. Okay, so that's the end of this section.